Hey everyone, this is Christopher Landon, the director of Scream 7, and you're watching Craven Something Scary. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, visitors, subscribers, patrons, and all of my amazing Cravenites. Welcome to Craven Something Scary, where it's all horror all the time. Guys, we are having an amazing time, and we literally are just getting started. I'm very excited for tonight's stream, and I know you guys are as well, because we are going to get to meet uh, one of the cast members of Scream 6, who, were, who you're going to find out played uh, actually three roles <laughs> in the movie. Uh, and I found out just about one of them a few minutes ago. Well, that was really extra exciting. And anyway, it's going to be amazing. Of course, you know by the thumbnail, we're going to be meeting, meeting Matthew Coderre. And he played Ghostface in some critical scenes. And he played some other folks, too. Before I bring him on, though, uh, to talk about Scream 6 and being Ghostface. And I, and I was just, you know, it, it, I just telling him earlier, the thought of being able to say you are officially cemented in the franchise of Scream as Ghostface. Not many people can say that. That's very much an honor. And I know that all of you guys see it the same way. And the fact that he's coming tonight to give his time for us to ask questions and for us to learn about his experience as Ghostface, uh, it's quite an honor for, for me. And I know it is for all of you that are here watching it. And for those that will be watching this later in the week, I know not everyone can watch it live, but some of you will watch it tomorrow and replay, you know, next week, next month even. But also, also, we're going to talk later in the stream about your opportunity to meet Matthew in person live this weekend. Oh, yeah. Lots of stuff to talk about. It's going to be awesome. So nobody leave. Stay tuned. And we're going to get into it. Now, I will say this real quick. Obviously, uh, when I have a guest like like this uh, and we and he is. Uh, been generous with this time to stay an hour with us, but you guys know how fast that goes. It flies by. So I want you all to send in your questions that you have for him about Ghostface, about Scream 6, anything that's on your mind while you have the opportunity to do that tonight. And I will get to as many questions as possible, but always remember it's not we're not going to be able to get to everyone's question, okay? So it's not personal. Don't take it that way. We just run out of time. And it's just, it's just, it just, it's what happens. All right. Um, but don't worry. There is a way. If you have a burning question that you really want to ask, you want to, you really want Matthew to see it, you can send in a super chat tonight and it will move to the front of the line in front of everyone else's questions. I will get it up on the screen so that Matthew will be able to see your name, your question or comment, and he can address that for you in real time, all right? That is my pledge to you. Super Chats will always move up to the front of the line. And you also support the channel when you do that. 
and I greatly appreciate it. It's a win-win for all involved. So you have that option should you choose to do it, all right? So having said all of that, I'm ready. You guys ready to buckle up? Okay, let's do this thing. Guys, I want to introduce to you one of the most uh, talented ghost face actors in Scream 6. Please welcome the one and only Matthew Coderre. What's up, Matthew? Hey, how are you? How are you, Stephen? I am doing awesome. And I want to thank you again, man, for making the time tonight. I know you had a very busy schedule. And, it, you know, we've had to reschedule some things. And, and I'm still glad you found the time to do this, especially before this weekend, which is a very big weekend. We're going to talk about. Yeah, yeah, of course we will. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, but again, you're welcome. Uh, just make yourself at home, man. You're in my house now. Just make yourself at home. Uh, you're amongst friends and fans. And uh, trust me, I have I always say this, Matthew. The community that I have here is the best in you on YouTube, and I mean that. I really believe that they're the the most kindest bunch of people, generous, kind, and thoughtful. They're just great folks. So you're amongst um, an amazing group of people. So I hope you're at home. <laughs> well, well, thank you very much, and thanks for having me on your podcast. I mean. Um... I mean, I've been through your stuff and you're providing uh, for us fans such great content. So it's a real oh. it's a real pleasure to be to be here with you tonight. Oh, that's man. Thank you so much. That really seriously. I appreciate that. That means a lot to me um, and, and appreciate you, you sharing that. That's so cool. Uh, Val, real quick, says hello. Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Hi, Val. Hi. <laughs> and. Bye bye, Polar. Or bye bye, Polar says, Welcome, happy to have you here. All right. And Rock says, hey, You may have to help me with this a little bit, Matthew. You okay from Getsno? Wow. Maybe someone I know. It could be. I don't know. I don't know. It's um, that's awesome. Very intriguing. Yeah, I was um, born in Montreal, but then I grew up in uh, Getsno when I was a kid. So so oh. I wouldn't be surprised this uh, Rock Darko is someone I know. Maybe I have someone in mind, but. Okay. Ooh. Well, well, well maybe as the night goes on, we'll, we'll, we'll learn more information here. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah says, happy to have you, Matthew. Excellent. I'm glad to be here. All right. That's awesome. All right. So, uh, Matthew, I always, I'm always just so interested before we get into anything with Scream 6, I, I'm always so curious about, you know, how things begin. You know, the the because the, there's there's always an origin point to everyone's story. And so what I'd like to ask you is, you know, when everything started for you personally, like in terms of knowing, like, this is what I want to do. And then professionally, like how your career got started. So can you kind of share us those how those two things came together? Yes, uh, of course. Well, I think for me, it all started at a young age without me even knowing about the stunt profession. You know, mm -hmm. I just remember as a kid, I was uh, watching and really enjoyed watching the Power Rangers. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> nice. I thought they were like really cool, uh, really badass and strong, and they would they would fight against uh, like evil monsters. So. So I remember I would uh, dress with my uh, red pajama and put a red helmet on and I would I would just be trying to do some Power Rangers move, you know, like imitate yeah. their movement and their karate movement. And so may, maybe that's the reason why my, my parents thought it'd be a, a good idea to sign me up for karate class uh, when I was um, when I was five years old. And. I think they got it right because I loved it, you know? So, mm -hmm. so during my childhood, I just grew up like being very fond of um, action movie and uh, martial arts movie. So um, I'd be watching like the Ninja Turtle, um, Batman, um, and, and later on the uh, films uh, of uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme and uh, Jackie Ooh. Chan movie. And 
the more I was evolving in in the karate world, the more uh, I would understand or be amazed by the choreography or the fights I, I would see in the movie because you know I was practicing like si similar movement and um, and so I remember like uh, my passion grew uh, it was uh, one Christmas I received the camera uh, as a gift and um, and with that camera I mean um, on the weekend, uh, me and my little brother, we would just create and invent some uh, fight choreographies that we'd have a lot of fun to, to, to shoot, you know, at different angles and all, which I would later on edit and make a short film out of it. So, like, this passion kept growing inside of me. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so, like, time, time passes and... Um, I think the crucial moment for me when I really, um, re really knew that I wanted to be a stunt performer where, was when I saw an interview. Um, it was a documentary, in fact, uh, about the, the stunt the, the stunt business, the stunt profession in Montreal. Mm -hmm. And they would bring us uh, behind the scenes and show us how the stunts were made, uh, how it was choreographed, uh, the fights, but also like the, the, the car uh, action sequences and, and all. And uh, one of the, the stunt coordinator that was interviewed, uh, which is a very well-known um, coordinator here in Montreal, uh, it's Jean Frenette. And uh, so uh, later on, I had a chance to, to meet with him during a karate seminar. So we, and I had a chance to talk with him. So we exchanged a bit and he explained to me um, what, what the business was all about and even gave me some tips if I ever wanted to join the, 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 the stunt community. Oh. But at that time I was still young, so so, you know, like I had a little steps uh, in front of me uh, before mm -hmm. even thinking of doing this as a as a profession. And so, um, yeah, uh, I still got this passion for cinema. Um, I moved in Montreal uh, when I'm 18 uh, to go to university and study in film studies. Okay. So, uh, so this passion is still there and. Uh, by 2013, uh, if I remember correctly, um, yeah, you know, I, uh, I I just heard about a new school, a stone school that that had just opened uh, maybe a year earlier, and it was uh, Jean Frenet School. So, Ooh. so, and I already knew him. And yeah. by that time, you know, like. Um, I've accumulated um, a lot of experience in karate since um, since I I've been competing for like uh, ten years and being part of the national team, uh, uh, the Canadian the, the Canadian national team. Um, so uh, uh, I was like a Canadian champion uh, multiple times, and I went to Pan American Championship where uh, I won several bronze medals, and and so by that time. I was a pretty skilled athlete, mm -hmm. and I think all that martial art background led me to to being uh, the 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 performer I am today. And I had the necessary skill uh, to uh, show up and join uh, for um, for this stunt school, and 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 it worked. I mean, um, and yeah. when I just joined them, um, I remember they, they were um, pre prepping for two movies, one in Toronto and one in Montreal. And the one who would make the casting would have the chance uh, to be uh, on, 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 on those movies. And that was the case for me. So uh, I started my career uh, 10 years, uh, 10 years uh, earlier. Um, uh, as a SSC, as we called it here. Uh, so it's a special skilled extra. So it's okay. like extra work, but uh, like we're into action and we have some uh, special skills that, that make us work uh, um, alongside with the, the stunt performer and we're being part of the action. And so, yeah, I, I was fortunate enough to, to start uh, working as SSC 
and that's how it all started. Oh, wow. What a great story. And the rest is history, as they say, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool, man. Um, and yeah, I just want to mention also to the, to the audience, uh, yeah, do, do continue to send your questions in uh, and your uh, super chats as well. Um, I will be, I do see, I have, I have one super chat from Derek's movie takes. So Derek, don't worry. I see it. Um, and you're actually, your, your question merges in nicely in a minute with what I'm going to be talking to Matthew about. So I'm going to hold off so that it flows a little better, but don't worry. I've got it. And we're going to ask that question, answer, ask and answer that question. Uh, and real quick, the mystery has been solved, Matthew. Rock Darko says he does not know you. Okay. <laughs> wow. There you go. What amazing <laughs> coincidence. It is from the same small town. Yep. That's wild. You guys could have seen each other and, didn't even realize it at yep. some point. Yep. Well, thank you for clearing that up for us, uh, Rock. <laughs> That's great. All right. So um, now moving on to Scream 6, how did the audition uh, process work for you? How did you get the, uh, the opportunity to audition for it? Well, that's the best part because I was lucky enough not to have to audition for for the project. Um, you know, uh, in general, here since we're a, a small community in Montreal, um, the audition process is more based on our on our past experiences with with the coordinator, or maybe if it's the first time working with a coordinator, uh, my name would have been referred to him. And okay. so here for Scream 6, um, I've known uh, the coordinator, uh, Alex. Uh, we've known each other for, for years. And I think in that case, uh, what helped me got uh, the part was that months before uh, they were shooting Scream, we worked together on a Netflix project. Oh. And I think he appreciated my work. So, mm -hmm. so maybe that's why uh, he had me in mind uh, when it was time for him to cast uh, the stunt performers for Scream 6. Well, I like to think that that, that was the reason and not because yeah. it was the only one available at the moment. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no I but, doubt uh, that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so, uh. so that's how it went. And uh, the first time I heard of Scream 6 was um, during a training session uh, I was having with a friend who ended up uh, being a Aiden Pantier stunt double in the movie. Mm -hmm. So we were training together and she was already involved in the previous uh, since uh, Alex has already begun uh, doing some um, um, previs and designing the, the action sequences and the stunts. And so she tells me about it. And two days later, uh, the phone rings and it's Alex um, on the phone asking me if I wanted to join them and start working on the previs for the final fight scene in, in the theater. Oh. And and so that's how it all started. And from that moment and over the course of two months, uh, I would get a call and receive information from him bit by bit. You know, sometimes it was day by day or even week by week. He would call me and give me updates on uh, what my implication uh, in the movie would be. Okay. Wow. That's amazing. Um and 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 we're gonna get into some other stuff you did too, but but and, and I mentioned this earlier too, Matthew. I mean, it's such a a small group that have had the the uh, the honor of donning the black robe and the mask. That is that is a very special group of individuals, and I've had the pleasure of meeting several of them uh, here, and it's been an honor for me. Uh, and I and I also met your colleague Max Lafayette. Yes, well. one of my good friend. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, 
fact, I should have contacted Max and said, try to have y'all together. That would have been, <laughs> that could be fun to do one sometime in the future. But maybe, uh, yeah, maybe for another podcast, I'd yeah. be so willing to do it, of course, because we shared the same experience and yeah. we had a lot of fun together on, on, the, on this set. So who yeah. knows? Right. Well, and the thing is with, you know, Max had his, you know, signature scene, you know, like Gail's apartment, you know, I think was probably his signature scene. But you, my friend, have a very distinct, very distinct, uh, what, what would I say, asterisk you can put on your, on your, on your screen resume because you were the ghost face that performed Ladies and gentlemen, the opening kill of Scream 6. Yes, I'm talking about Samara Weaving, Laura in the alley. And that was you, Matthew, in the costume. You it, you did all of that, correct? It was, it was me. It was me, yes. Oh, man. And I have to ask you this question. Um, how did it feel to kill Samara Weaving? <laughs> oh, man. Uh... I wish I didn't have to kill her because she's such a <laughs> lovely and kind person. <laughs> she is. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was an amazing experience and uh, it was really fun to shoot with her. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we, we did this scene over a period of two nights and... Okay. Um, and since it was a night shoot, we had like a time constraint because... Um, you know, whenever the the morning light appears, uh, you cannot shoot anymore. And we had a, a lot of stabbing going on, and they wanted to cover <laughs> with a lot of angles. So yeah. there was there was very little downtime. Uh, we would go shots after shots, and and um, and I think that's why um, it was really convenient for me to keep um, the mask on. And so thinking of it, I, I'm not even sure if Samara Weaving saw my real face. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe like once or twice, you know, but... Um, you had to get and, a drink of water at some point, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, at some point, sometimes. But, but you know, it was really convenient to, to, to keep the mask on because... It, it was going a lot, a lot more faster and less touch-ups, you know, when we repo a scene. So, so okay. we get to move on and, and work more efficiently. Um, and and so and yeah, I remember that th this scene um, had its uh, challenges, and it requires a, a great deal of focus um, because even though uh, there was there was lighting everywhere. Uh, to, to lead the scene, um, it was pretty dark uh, in the alley. Yeah. And with the mask on, uh, I can tell you that the visibility was very poor, you know? Um, wow. So, uh, and you're, it's already hard for you to see. It, it's already right? hard. If to... it was bright, right? Like just because exactly. the meshing. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and given that it's in a dark environment, it's even uh, it's even more difficult, and so and so you know like uh, you have a lot going on in your head. Um, uh, you yeah. don't want to step uh, on the rope. You don't want to stumble. Uh, mm -hmm. You want to get uh, the timing right. Uh, when you do the stabbings, you want to get the distance right uh, with the right intensity, um, right. because um, you know Matt and Matt and Tyler really wanted this ghost face to be um really aggressive they wanted the opening yeah. scene to be very brutal um uh, and very violent and so um i know it's technical stuff but um when i was stabbing samara i only had the handle uh with no blade and ah. it, it's convenient in a way because uh, there's less risk of injuries uh, without, uh, with no blade in the way. But at mm -hmm. the same time, uh, what it implies is that each and every strike, I had to make contact because, oh. you know, like, uh, yeah. because I needed to uh, get, get the, the blade to stick in, you know, make the blade disappear. 
mm-hmm. uh, because otherwise, um, if I'm not doing it, um, you, you know, maybe my hand with the CGI blade and her mo- uh, and her body as she's she's in motion, she's moving back. Uh, m- maybe both won't move accordingly w- one another. So so wow. well, like. You need to make contact with the handle, mm-hmm. and and the tricky part is uh, you want to sell it big, you want to sell it uh, very uh, violent for the camera, but at the same time, the execution uh, of the movement has to be in a very um, controlled fashion, you know, mm-hmm. so so you don't hurt her, and yeah. uh, so, so I don't hurt uh, Samara, you know, because she she's an actress, she's not the uh, the stunt double. Right. And so in between takes, uh, I would go to her and I would just make sure that everything was uh, doing fine, that I didn't rush into her with too much intensity and mm-hmm. and then and that the stab w- was OK with her. And, you know, in the end, um, she was great. She, she was uh, it was so easy. To work with her, she was so natural uh, and so uh, so good, and yeah, she always had the her the smile on her face. You know, like she was really willing to do this part, and you could tell she really enjoyed it. And you know, like yeah, like uh, it, it was really fun. You know, like uh, one moment she would get stabbed and uh, and scream to death and once the camera would cut uh, the mood would be relaxed again and we would laugh about it so (laughs) i can tell you this was really fun working with her and that was an amazing experience wow i I can only imagine how cool that must have been uh and when i met uh michelle laliberte the production designer for the movie she was telling me that that scene with Samara, that Samara was screaming so loud and so, and it in multiple takes and everything, that like people that were living in the apartment right there were like <laughs> freaking out, like, you know, <laughs> like, what's going on, you know, down there, people coming to check on stuff. And, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I even heard that uh, production offered for, for, for you know, the, the neighbors that wanted to have a, a good night's sleep uh, without being disturbed. They offered them, I think, like uh, to, to move them to, uh, in an hotel room oh. for, 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 for the duration of the shoot. Wow. So I don't know if it's if it's uh, right information, but I mean, yeah. with all with all that screaming, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> those people that stuck, those people that stayed. No, we're gonna stay here. They didn't have a right to complain. <laughs> they had a chance to go. <laughs> yeah, funny. well, they were in front row for uh, for spoilers or for um, for bits of the movie. So That's a good I would point. have stayed. I would have stayed. Honestly, I would have too, man. I would. <laughs> I would totally would have. Uh, well, real quick, Matthew, we've got before we continue on with some some questions that I have, we do have some super chat questions that have come through. Uh, so we want to go ahead and get those. So we're going to start basically, guys, in the order that they came in. So everybody hang tight. I will get to all of them. Um, but Derek's movie takes. Thank you so much. Send a two dollar super chat. Thank you so much, Derek. Says, hi, Matthew. What was your favorite scene to shoot? Now was one of my questions for you later, but we'll ask it now. What was your favorite scene? Um, without anything a doubt, top that? Yeah, well, <laughs> without a doubt, it was um, the opening kill. Yeah. I'm, I mean, the opening kill because um, that's what kicks off the movie, right? Um, mm-hmm. And... And you want to make it right. Uh, you, you want it to have a huge impact on the audience, and and um, and the opening scene in this one in Scream Six in particular, uh, it was a special one because you know in the Scream franchise, uh, the fir- in the first kill, the killer's never reveals his identity. Oh. 
it, it, it always it, it's a mystery until the end mm -hmm. but um in that one it's a special one because you know it's kind of a part of a double twist because yes. uh because the killer uh, reveals his face and we mm -hmm. saw this this student uh with his madness and his urge to kill uh, yeah. played by tony but That's on right. the reveal uh, actually it was me performing the movement and and so and it turns out uh, later on that it's not the real killer um and mm -hmm. he's getting killed himself so it was really like later on uh, once i've um watching the movie that i realized how how important or, or how impactful this scene was so yeah. i would say definitely yeah. this uh, that was a lot of fun to 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 shoot uh there was a lot of fun to do and i think this is my yeah my my favorite scene yes well it's you know again it's an iconic scene uh, and to your point whenever um whenever you give that final knife swipe and the blood hits the mask it, all of us in this you know watching it we're waiting for the title card that's, <laughs> yeah. you know that's where it comes in scream six and and we're like i'm waiting for it i'm like nothing's happening they, they're still cameras still on Ghostface, yeah and then you know boom the mask comes off and your head explodes um never it's a first in the franchise um but i i i i would be shocked if you had picked something more or something else because uh, and, and think about this how does it feel matthew just to know that in this this iconic franchise with such an intense and hardcore fandom that 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 there that there is for it um how does it feel to know that you're one of only a total of six people on screen that were involved in an opening attack um how does that feel man is it because that's even an extra special distinction man it's um i can say this is a uh this is an amazing feeling you, you know to be among all these legends uh if you think of lee waddell the the og yes. um alan robinson in the second oh, yes. one and and all of the uh all of the ghost faces including max which mm -hmm. totally nailed it you know he did a fantastic job it was so great and so to be among them um that's an honor that's an honor and yeah. what a pleasure to have portrayed this iconic character and um infused it with my personality like my own yes kind of yeah personality yeah that is something i have to say it is. Yeah, that that's a great feeling that's so cool it, it, it's, it's so awesome and um you know and it's just, it's just a rare it's a rare group it was already a rare group to be any ghost face but when you talk about the openings now you're going to even a smaller oh a yeah a smaller group now subgroup and that's yeah over over what 25 years let's whatever it is now uh are almost 25 years um i'm no mathematician so <laughs> if i'm off of my math i'm off a long time okay over 20 uh, years 97 I 96 think? right 96, 96 okay so we're getting there Agreed, uh, getting there slowly yeah yeah we're getting there but uh point of it is though over all those years uh only five other people other than you have done it and that is pretty amazing um kyle says my favorite scene now i see something red <laughs> you killed it yeah thank yeah. you very much kyle <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to some more super chats that have come through. Uh, Rock has sent in a super chat for five dollars. Thank you so much. Is it me, or I notice a lot of Quebec names looking at the credits in the crew? Was there a little Quebec click? LOL. <laughs> Proud of you, by the way. Well, thank you, Rock. Um, actually, the movie was shot uh, in Montreal. Uh, I, I know um, the set, the setting in the movie, uh, 
they're in New York. Uh, but actually, uh, production came uh, came in Montreal and where it was and um, where where it was shot. And mm-hmm. so, um, and so mm-hmm. that's perfectly normal. Uh, if you're seeing in the credits a, a lot of uh, uh, Quebec uh, Quebecers' sure. name, uh, because uh, we were, uh, yeah, there was a lot of uh, of them, me included, you know. Sure, sure. Uh, local crew, lo- local folks, Ooh. professionals, and uh, makes sense. Makes sense. Now, um, thank you, Rock, for your super chat and your question. And next up, we got a super chat from my good friend, Sarah. What's up, Sarah? I'm sending in $5 to support the channel. I appreciate it. As a fellow Canadian, I'm very proud to have a Canadian ghost face. Thank you for coming to talk to us tonight. Like I said, it's a real pleasure to be here. So thank you very much, Sarah. Oh, yes. Thank you, Sarah. Much love, my friend. And my good my good friend, one of my very, very, very close friends, Knight from the Night Watch Zone, an amazing channel, amazing guy, says salute to my brother Stephen. Well, thank you, man. <laughs> thank you for being here, Matthew. We appreciate it very much. Awesome job as Ghostface, but I still wish you didn't kill. Samara's character. <laughs> me too. Me too. Uh, what a I, nice I gotta tell you, person Matthew, she was. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, uh, we we used to whenever you know we were always doing theories and stuff leading up to the movie. You know, we I do live streams, videos. We theorize. We talk about what do we think about this character is going to be. And I I had a, I just had this you know the gut feeling was Samara's the opening kill. The minute they announced her hiring, I'm like oh. They're gonna kill her in the opening, but we would we would like fantasize like, what if she's gonna be Ghostface, or what if she's gonna make it to the end? You know what I'm saying? Like, uh-huh. but I I just could not shake that feeling that she was could have been be you know like it yeah. could have been uh, would have been really interesting. But that's the cool thing about this franchise is that mm-hmm. you never know where it's gonna lead you. No. You know? You nope. can never take anything for granted. No, not at all. And everything usually matters, like little comments and things in the script that oh, some yeah, people kind of let go. It, there's usually something behind it if you really pay attention, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. Which is really cool. Uh, but, Knight, thank you for your generous super chat, buddy. I appreciate it. And uh, I, I agree with you, man. Uh, we, we, it was sad to see Samara go, but it was great to see her in the movie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> thanks buddy much appreciated my friend uh, and I think we've got we've got one more super chat here that's come through uh, Russell sent a $2 super chat thank you so much Russell um, I don't see a question here with though but if you do have a question do put it in the chat and I'll get that up for Matthew um, otherwise if you're uh, just submitting uh, to support the channel hey I appreciate that as well, but uh, if you do have a question, feel free to put it in the in the chat, and, and I'll be glad to answer it. Wonderful, thank you. All right, Russell, appreciate that. And just some other comments about the uh, opening scene. Polar says, "Does your ears bleed? That girl can scream. <laughs> Love her so much." <laughs> oh yeah, um, yeah, she really was able to to scream uh, um i i think uh since that movie she's been called the the scream queen is that mm-hmm. correct i've uh, heard some people say uh, that I, yeah. I've, yeah i've heard it too um yeah what can i say it was a really convincing scream like if she was. was getting stabbed for real that's uh, right no acting, no acting needed. I think it was all. Uh, it it came out from 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 the bottom of, uh, of her heart. Uh, you know, uh, mm-hmm. really good felt scream. So yeah, my ears was kind of bleeding a little bit. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> and Val, real quick, my good friend Val says uh, the opening kill was pretty brutal. Job well done, Matthew. Well, thank you, Val. Much appreciated. 
Yes. Yes, indeed. All right. Um, okay. So let's uh, let's get to uh, – oh, oh, here we go. Hold on. Here is the question that Russell had sent in for his super chat. Um, and it was right here. Uh, I'm Native Canadian. Uh, what was your first film? Um, so my first film, um, you know, as a kind of a stunt performer, mm -hmm. uh, was, uh, was Pompeii with, uh, Kit Arrington. Uh, okay. like I, like I mentioned before, uh, uh, we were doing some SSC's work and our scene was, uh, w one of our scene, Although we trained for, for months uh, for a gladiator role, you know, like when, uh, when you see uh, SSC in the background uh, mm -hmm. fighting each other, uh, that's part of the job. And for, for me uh, in Pompeii, uh, we were a citizen uh, running, uh, running for our lives uh, when the tsunami uh, came in. Uh, was rushing into the city okay. so so we went through a lot of um you know running uh uh pushing each other so mm. that was kind of the the scene that uh that 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 started all for me okay uh awesome. well if i'm being uh real honest the the first first movie i did was even earlier than that, uh, like a few years earlier, um, as an extra in a in a Quebec movie. So that uh, would that would answer the question. But uh, yeah, I started that as as an extra, and then step by step, uh, you gradually uh, gradually became uh, a stunt performer. Wonderful! Wow, that's that's awesome, man. Um, and you just build on it. You know, you just build on it and. And like you say, pretty soon, like you mentioned at the very beginning tonight, it's it's in a situation where your reputation, your experience that you've demonstrated, you get the phone call from a stunt coordinator that knows you well and says, hey, Matthew, I get, let's go to work on this movie. And it's not even about auditioning. It's because they already know. They already yeah. know you're, you know, you're professional. You, you know what you're doing. And that's, that's awesome that you, you know, you build to that level. That's great. That's so great, man. Um, now I want to ask you something about how the actual, you know, like feeling on the set. So how, how would you describe the culture and the feeling on set that Radio Silence established, you know, when you're there working, uh, what was that like? What, what kind of environment was it like to work with the Radio Silence directed set? <sighs> when I, uh. I mean, um, w when you have such great leaders uh, like uh, Matt and Tyler, uh, uh, who are so nice to work with and and so passionate about this this franchise, and you know, the, they're they're bringing they're bringing to the tables such a fresh and new take on on this franchise um alongside with the writers and the producers of course but i think i think that motivates uh, everyone uh, in all the department and that motivates them uh, to give their all uh, because they know they they partake into something special you know mm -hmm. uh and so everyone was very professional very committed and obviously, I cannot assume that everyone's a, a big fan of the franchise. Uh, you, you know, s some don't even like our movie, and it's just like it's just it, it's just a job at the end of the day. But but they love their job, and they're there, and they and they're giving a, they're all uh, their best to make the best movie possible. Um, sure. And so, but. Um, it was incredible, you know, like the, this mm -hmm. culture and um, thinking of the the art department. It was it was so amazing, you know, the high level of, of detail uh, they went through 
you know, mm -hmm. the sanctuary where when you can see all the oh. props and all the, and all the elements yeah. from uh, referencing previous movies. Um, you got at some point uh, really be passionate about your job to go into that level of details. Yes. And I wasn't personally involved. Uh, I wasn't uh, uh, involved in the, um, you know, the subway scene or uh, in the mm -hmm. apartment when they're crossing from one apartment to, to another. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I learned afterward that um, these scenes were uh, created in studio. So the people behind behind th those set, that's that's incredible work. I wow. mean, yeah. So so yeah, you have to be committed and, and passionate about it. And I think like everyone uh, working together as a team to make this version of, of a of a movie of Scream Six. Yeah. Yeah, they, they had to to um yeah, they had to feel great about it. Mhm. Mm yeah. 100%, man. I I I agree. I mean, you know, like I say, and I've always I've always, you know, the for, for those who out there who aren't big fans of the movie for whatever reason, I've always said like this, look, it it, it, it Radio Silence didn't write the movie. They did it. They, no. they did not write this. They is that you know if you have an issue with the story, then you have an issue with writers. That's different. That's a whole different group. That's James and Guy. But but Radio Silence took what was on the page, and they brought it to life. And you know with Michelle Alberta, the production designer, all of her team, as you're alluding to, the stuff that they you know the sets they built in Mel's, and you know the sound stages, and just you know there's been some there was incredible work done uh and you're included in that in this movie and hard work done by everyone involved and you know i i just respect everyone so much that was a part of this film for for what they did whether it was off camera on camera it doesn't matter there was some genuine really passionate people mm -hmm. that made this movie happen yeah, I agree. It's a team effort, and uh, mm -hmm. and it shows in the end result. I mean, yeah. Yeah, the, the, for me, the sanctuary uh, has been like one of the most amazing set uh, set I've been working in, mm -hmm. and, and so yeah, it shows. And every everybody there working like they're all kind to each other. Uh, they just want to have fun at the end of the day, you know. Yes. And make a good movie, right? I mean make everyone good... comes that's the whole point. Everyone wants to make a good movie and 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 I and I think it was. I think you guys did you nailed it. So I think you know? it was I think we we succeeded. Yeah. Um you know, each his own part and implication, but I think I think Scream Six was a hell of a good movie. Yes, absolutely. Um now Real quick here, um, I want to <clears throat> move away from Ghostface for a moment because that's not all that you did, Matthew. You also did a couple of other things. Now, first, let's talk about the one that I have the images for here. Let me. So, so ladies and gentlemen, the audience, um, Matthew also doubled for Henry Zerny. That's right, uh, right there, Doctor Stone. <laughs> Look at that, guys. So, Matthew, I'm assuming now, <laughs> keep me honest, <laughs> but I'm assuming that the moment that head hits that, hits that fate, I mean, uh, that glass in the door, yeah. we're seeing you. Am I, am I right on this? Actually, we're seeing both because okay. uh, the, so the, the first time uh, it was me do, doing the, the action, going through my face getting smashed into the the window glass and then mm -hmm. to the to the fence uh, this metal fence and so and it was um they shot it with a tighter lens um okay. and and the fence was was it was very secure you know it was padded uh 
which allowed the actor afterwards to to just like give his take on on, on the action and do it and in the final uh, in the in in the movie it's a mix of both uh, me is sometimes you'll recognize me and if if you look at, at the picture you know like the wig's a little bit different you know like the the hair is right. it's not kind of like it has its its differences so so if you pay <laughs> this one makes me laugh it makes me laugh because you know like if you look at the beer like i've been through um to make up maybe maybe i spent like an hour trying to get it to to get this this beard right and and they just kept adding on some some makeup but at the end it just looked like it, it was kind of it had a, a feeling of a like if it looks like plastic you know so they had to remove it oh. a bit and, and try some other stuff like uh paint the uh, paint color silver and everything so yeah anyway um <laughs> if you pay attention in the movie uh you might notice when it's me do, doing ah. the uh, when it's me doing doing the stunt and when it's him um but uh but yeah uh with it both and henry just he nailed it yes that's well you know it's funny because next time i watch scream six now i'm gonna watch that scene and look for the beard color beard color look, maybe the hair and maybe the hair a little you, bit yeah maybe you'll notice the differences but you know what? It's it really is film tight, like you yeah. said. It, it's it's really and it's it happens quickly. It happens it's your, quickly you know, yeah. your 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 eyes don't take it all in, and that's kind of the point. It's supposed to be bang, 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 and then you know he's on the ground, and it's just like just like that. And uh, but that's really cool. That's cool. I didn't know that. But there's another character that you also doubled in this movie, Matthew, and it was Dermot Mulroney. As Detective Bailey, can you walk us through the scene, if you will, what that was like doubling him, and and when can we see you as Detective mm -hmm. Bailey? Uh, yes, of course. So um, the scene um, I had to do doubling him was, if you remember, um, so Sarah just uh, killed um, Quinn. Uh, Bailey's daughter and then out of rage they rush into each other and they fall off the balcony mm -hmm. so that was my scene where I jumped in and um, so we did the fall over the balcony okay um, it was uh, so you know like a simple a simple fall uh, on mats and then a couple of days later we would repo uh, shooting the impact when I just go through the the table, the glass table, and breaks it uh, before uh, before Bailey uh, just uh, gets knocked unconscious. So mm -hmm. that was me doing this fall, not him, obviously. And um, and there was another scene where I was asked um, to be on set that day, although I was standby because Dermot just did it all um it was for the stabbing so i was there in case stand by uh but but like you know it, it just went very well and he, he did this all stabbing scene at the end when when uh, sarah stabs him multiple times um yeah you know, i was there just in case something happened i was there uh in the beginning so we could run the scene through with the with the storm coordinator and show him like what it would be like to to get stabbed and just get this body language uh yeah. you know like uh, on point mm -hmm. and and yeah he did a great job really so yeah. those were my 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 two moments uh doubling uh dermot mulroney love it that's awesome guys it's kind of insight that you know we we wouldn't get anywhere else you know you can only get it in a situation like this where you can just hear share and hear it yeah and so as we watch scream six now moving forward it's going to be awesome because with these little tidbits we're going to we can remember these things now and and say oh there's matthew you know there's <laughs> matthew i see him 
Yeah. Don't um, blink. Don't blink because it happens really <laughs> fast. <laughs> true. That's true. Uh, um, that's that's fantastic. Um, now I know we're getting I know we're getting close to an hour. I don't want to. Now I always want to be very respectful of your time, so I don't want to overextend or anything. But um, I do have a, a, a few more questions that I want to. Was hoping to talk about. I'm well. We're going to talk about. I'm not going to let you go until we talk about this weekend. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, but uh, do you have time for a few more questions, or do we need to kind of wrap, start to wrap it? No, of course. I mean, we're having okay. fun. So and okay. So yeah, I'm 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 glad to stay and to to keep okay. on going. Okay. Well, you just again, I want to be very respectful of your time and not overextend it. So. You, you know, if there comes a point here where you're like, okay, I need to, I need to start heading out, please let me know seriously. And we'll, we'll do that. Um, but I just have a couple more, really two or three more questions. Uh, unless we get any, uh, last super vet chat questions in, I do want to ask, uh, just kind of a couple of things. And, so, and I've seen some folks ask this too. Um, but regarding scream six, uh, what was the most difficult or challenging stunt or scene that you would say you you, you performed? Um, so okay, um, in, in so in Scream Six, uh, I would say the most challenging stunt, and not because the stunt itself was a, a very difficult or. or mm -hmm or there was a risk of injuries it, it's not it's not that uh, the scene was very challenging and i will and i will explain to you the reason why mm -hmm. was the fall over the balcony and mm -hmm. so here's why uh and, and you know uh, it was a pretty uh, simple fall it was uh we called we called them like uh, low falls it was only like uh, 15 uh, feet drops into mats so okay. nothing to be to, to be very scared about or worried about but what happened is that that morning when i woke up you know like like i do every morning i go out with my dog and i have a little boston terrier so Aww. he has a lot of energy uh, and if if i don't if i don't bring him and play fetch with him with the ball He's going to be mad all day. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I go to the park and, and play fetch with him. So I throw the balls a couple of times. And then at one point, I bend, I, I bend down uh, to pick up the ball. And all of a sudden, I can feel this, this huge pain uh, in my abdominals, uh, in my diaphragm. And the pain uh, reaches out uh, to my back. You know, uh, I must have done like, the wrong movement or something. But then I was stuck in that position. And I, I knew that it was kind of a, a big deal at that time because it already happened to me in the past. And so I, I couldn't really move. And each time I would take a breath, uh, I would get spasm and cramps. And so... And all I all I could think of is, geez, okay, I I got this scene later on today when I'm going to be asked to do multiple times uh, a, a 15 feet uh, fall oh. on my back. So I was kind of worried for a moment. And yeah. so, yeah, you know, like uh, it stresses me out and it became kind of a, like a, a mental game, you know? And so... Wow. Before getting on set, um, I just I tried to to uh, to massage a bit in this area to relieve pain. I take a, a drug for muscle pain relief, uh, okay. but really it has no effect. And so oh, I, I go there, I go on set. You know, I mean, I I cannot call this off because um, it it's it's so last minute and there won't be any backup for me i need to i need to do it i need to be there so i keep it for myself just yeah. hoping that the pain will oh. fade away 
as the day goes by, you know? Oh, <laughs> Matthew. I, oh, man. And I can tell you, like, it, it was a long day to be, uh, to yeah. be in pain. Usually we're doing uh. like uh, 12 hours a uh, work shift. And I remember at one point, I was just trying to get some rest and I would, and, and just laying down on my back would hurt me so much and I couldn't Dang. breathe, couldn't breathe properly. So, yeah. So I'm thinking of, of this fall that I, I might have to go through like uh, several times because they wanted, they want to cover all angles, you know? And, and so sometimes you ask to, to do the stunts multiple times. And sure. so, I, at lunch break, you know, I tried to do some mobility exercise just to, to, to get the body loose a bit, but really the pain stick, you know, it stayed with me. It stayed with me the whole day. And so as we're about to shoot uh, this scene, um, it's done in two parts. So the first one for the close up for us, just leaving frame uh, the start of the fall uh we're just as assembling uh, scaffolding you know assembling the structure mm -hmm. and so i help the crew um and you know each each piece of the structure feels very heavy and like it it, it worsened the pain <laughs> so oh, and this, is, this I, is killing me Matthew. This, <laughs> and so you know like uh, <clears throat> it's coming it's coming this stunt's coming oh and but then something happened, you know. Uh, uh, we start doing uh, these shots, and gradually, just the pain become less. You know, like it, it eased a bit. And by the time uh, we remove the structure to do the actual fall, the fifteen foot fall into the mats. Gosh. I was so grateful that, and I don't know why, maybe it was due to the adrenaline rushing into my body, but yeah, that by this moment, like I would feel great. And the pain was like, it, it was never there. So, so we did the fall. Uh, I think we did, we did it like six times. And oh, every six. time it, it went smooth, you know, but I was afraid uh, for a moment because um, this pain could like really, um, it could have prevent, uh, prevented me for, from doing like other shots, you know, or prevented me for, uh, from doing my job correctly, you know. Um, of course, yes. But in the end, everything went well. And once I got back, uh, you know, I started to feel the pain again, oh, <laughs> but, no. but, you know, it was okay because, um, I had a couple of days ahead of me before, uh, doing, um, what follows next when I crash, uh, onto the table. And so I had plenty, plenty of times to recover properly. And, um, yeah, I was just so grateful that, um, <laughs> that I, I could make it, um, in one piece <laughs> my goodness matthew and you kept all that inside i, I kept all of that inside yeah and so oh. that's why sometimes when you're thinking about like a, a challenging stunts it's not yeah. always like the craziest stunt or or the most dangerous one it's mm -hmm. just it really depends on on the context you're in and what happened prior to the stunt or or whatever and sometimes it it can you know it can make a difference is uh on how you approach uh your your work your stunt and uh yeah sometimes the simplest stunts can be the most challenging wow and and rock says it too we're grateful you made it in one piece no <laughs> doubt man goodness that, that 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 says a lot about uh uh what's that what's that word you got some uh Oh, I'm never mind. I can't remember the word, but there's an expression, you know, you, you got that, you got that extra level in you, man. That's, that's incredible. I mean, I, I'm just thankful that things worked out. Okay. Like, you it, know what I mean? Like it, yeah, it, yeah. It, it ended up being all right. Um, but yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's right. Night. Yeah, definitely a trooper. <laughs> 
true respect for you, man. Exactly. I mean, there. I mean, the fact that you were hurting that bad the entire day, but you wanted. You know what? You were going to do it. You were determined to do it, and it's incredible, man. And that's that's just that says a lot. It says a lot about you. It really does. Um, wow, well, that was a great question. I was not expecting that answer that that was fantastic <laughs> um now can i ask you this also and then we're going to start talking about chiller and i can't wait um was there a funny or unexpected moment that you could share that happened while you were present during filming could have been something you experienced or you have, you saw happen just something you know that you, you you took away like oh that was funny or unexpected i'm gonna i'm gonna remember that um i would say well um that was a, a funny moment that uh, I, that i realized afterward um and i have to mention uh, the scene where uh when i appeared uh, behind the behind chad for the first time as the second ghost face so yes. so this is me in the costume stabbing him for the first time and so yeah that was like a moment moment before i would uh jump in the scene and stab him That's and so, cool. so what was funny about it is like is that matt, matt and tyler wanted it to be like very brutal once again really uh violent so we would do the scene uh me and max laferriere yeah, and we go on, you know, like stabbing uh, uh, each uh, each one is turn, and we might have stabbed him like I don't know, maybe fifteen times. I think uh, it was I, seventeen, actually. Okay, so You're thank very you for close. that. Seventeen, yeah. and that <laughs> was a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah, it is. <laughs> and what I found funny is that later on, when I learned that chad had survived <laughs> that's i'd survived all this stab all, all the stabbing yes uh, i thought to myself like how bad of a killer <laughs> can you be to miss all the vital spots i mean <laughs> after you know after that many stabs so yeah yeah, yeah so, I... and and <laughs> like when, once you 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 watch the movie and you see him at the end that he, he survives uh, yeah, yeah that was a shocker that was a you. shocker you know like yeah. uh, because uh prior to that to that scene like um i never got the script you know like production really wanted to mm -hmm. to to keep it uh as much a secret as possible so mm -hmm. i didn't know anything about it and while stabbing him i thought man that guy for sure is dead completely dead like no way he's coming back but no way he's coming uh, back but you no. know like w one thing once again the franchise uh teaches you is like you can never take a kill for granted you like mm -hmm. except if you put a bullet in his head that's it <laughs> That's, that, that, that's the only that's, rule that's, that's the only right rule. so right. yeah for me that was pretty funny to, to think <laughs> about this was. scene and like okay he, he's a pretty tough guy <laughs> <laughs> chad's uh, a trooper you know oh man well you know it's so funny that you because we're on the same wavelength and some, some of my you know my community here they're chiming in because we've had so many discussions on this channel and live streams and even me doing videos about it, like we call him Swiss Cheese Chad. That's his nickname <laughs> in the community, and and everyone's laughing because they're like, "Yes, like we're actually hearing Matthew. We're hearing one of the ghost faces that actually stabbed Chad, and and even you're in 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 disbelief. It's a shocker. I'm telling you, um, that's really funny. Uh, Chad the Terminator. That's another one we call him on the channel. That's right, night. Well, um, maybe he gets to play a supernatural being in, in the next installment, <laughs> you know, in Scream 7. I, right. <laughs> Have him, like, floating up and, and you know, <laughs> hovering and floating. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's crazy. I Because, uh, and, and the thing is, you and Max, man, 
you guys were going to town and it's all in his upper torso. I mean, we're talking about lungs. Had to have gotten punctured. Heart. Heart. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, everywhere. Just, just everywhere. Chop, 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 chop on both sides. And, like, it was insane. And I'll say this. Like, I love the character of Chad. So I was very sad when that scene happened because I was like, oh, man, uh, I really like Chad. Yeah. But I will tell you this. I believe if they had left him as a as a, just as dead, I think that would have been one of the most iconic kill scenes. Well, I, in my opinion, in mm. the entire franchise, we would be talking about that. Like we talked about Casey Becker and Scream One, you know Tatum and, and others along the way. But regardless of the outcome, you and Max, you were awesome. And I, I got to tell you, when you do the dual knife swipe. Oh yeah, bro! I'm like, oh, this is amazing. I, I just, I, it gave me chills, man. Okay, so here's another phony moment. They did this knife swiping thing. Uh huh. It was so funny because we had to do it uh, a couple of times to get it right because. You know, with the mask, we can't see each other properly. And oh, we yeah. had to get the timing right. So while doing it, um, we would count out loud <laughs> to, oh. to, to, to to get this this swipe at the same same time, same moment. So we would go, okay, so we we would rehearse it, you know, like okay, one, two, three, and then I'd go, we swipe. And okay. And we had to to go through a, a couple of times before getting it right, but in the end, I think the shot they kept in the movie was was a good oh, one. It was awesome. I'm like, you know, chop, 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 and then they you you basically stop, you drop them, and then you stand there together and you just do the in unison. It was perfect. Swish. Just write that blood off with the glove, bro. I'm telling you, I, I'm not joking. I got chills when I saw it. I thought it was amazing. I loved that scene. And I'm so glad you guys did that. That was a great choice. Great choice. Well, it, it was certainly a Matt and Tyler idea. So, or mm -hmm. maybe it was in the script. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I, I think it was a very like, powerful um, image, you know. Oh, gosh, yes, it was. It was. And hey, just real quick, um, I want to say a big thank you here to... Uh, Russell, Russell has just become a channel member here on the channel. Thank you, Russell. That is so awesome of you to become a part of the inner circle here on the Cult of Craven. And you now are a Cravenite. So thank you so much. That is so amazing. We appreciate you. And you are make yourself at home. I think you're going to love this community and uh, can't wait to see you back on future streams that's awesome thank you um okay so uh real quick guys because we are running over uh and and matthew's being generous to extend a little bit so uh, it's time for us to talk about something i'm very excited about um which is this weekend everyone that hears my voice or sees us on the screen right now you have a chance to meet matthew face to face Get a picture, get an autograph, and or, and get heck, get both. Obviously, if you want, you get them both. Get everything <laughs> this weekend because he is going to appear at the Chiller Theater Convention, the twenty seventh to the 29th. That's this Friday through Sunday, and this is his first East Coast appearance, and. Guys, he's going to be there along with, of course, it's they're calling it a Scream reunion, uh, Six Com Marketing. You guys know, you guys met Robert the other day. We have a partnership there. And it is a Scream reunion at Chiller Theater Con. So you're going to get to see Matthew, the new ghost face. You're going to get to see our friend Lynn McCree who I've been friends with for two year, two plus years now. Lynn McCree is going to be there in her very first ever convention appearance, guys. And Alan Robinson, 
ghost face and scream two you've got two ghost faces at the same location from two and six and that's alan's very first convention appearance as well so you can go this weekend at the hilton hotel parsippany new jersey and i know my moderators have the have been putting up the uh, actual web address for the chiller convention gives you all the details directions locations everything and you can see matthew there at the convention and matthew i know that uh, you've previously done a convention there you are signing items there people in line to meet you um can you let everyone that's listening and watching uh, give them an idea of what you're most excited about this weekend in new jersey in regards of, of meeting the fans man you know like it's yeah meeting the fan it is uh, it's a real pleasure meeting them you know because now you get to exchange with them and and talk about about the common passion you know about these movie and sometimes theories about the, the scream franchise uh so it's it's so cool to 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 be with them uh to exchange with them um and you know that that's the reason why we're we're like we're doing uh, these films like to for for the fan base which mm -hmm. is incredible by the way and and the the love and the support they they give us this is priceless i mean so it's always yeah. always a good time sharing with them uh and yeah i'm really excited about uh going to to that convention uh yeah nice. next weekend yeah i can't wait it's it's always very super cool and yeah super excited gonna be fantastic matthew i I know everyone's excited. Um, I had Lynn and Alan on earlier in the month, and even Kevin Ball was I uh, had him on, and you guys are all going to be there. And I'm telling you, it, it's I think it's going to be an exciting time for all of you. And I believe Robert told me he's going to have all of you guys together. The Scream Crew will be kind of right one, two, three together, which is so cool. Oh yeah, um, it is cool. It is very cool. Yeah. Oh man. Oh man, I cool. I can't wait. Looking forward to it. Really. Yes. It's guys, listen, I said it before. I'll say it again. If you are within driving distance, if you know, and I of course, what does that mean? Well, I mean, eight to ten hours, you can do that in a day. You know, yeah, I'm just saying. But if if you're within <laughs> you know, it's doable. Make that trip to New Jersey this weekend, or better yet, just fly in. Just fly in and, you know, and just get an Uber you know, or whatever you got to do. Um, but it's worth it because you're going to get to see all these people that I've had here on the channel. You're going to see Matthew, Alan, Lynn, Kevin. They're all going to be there. And it will be a, a truly a scream reunion. So make sure you guys go if you're at all, if it's at all possible go and represent craven something scary i would love for you guys to go and meet matthew and say hey i'm a cravenite you know hey i i was i saw you on craven this week that would be so cool it oh yeah it would be so cool yeah it, it would be so cool and just just letting you know that it's gonna be a blast and hope to see you all at the at the convention yes yes indeed and also, if we could get that, uh, if one of my mods could put the link for the convention up right now, which is what we're talking about it, I would appreciate it. Let's get that up again. I know you guys have been doing it throughout the stream, and I appreciate that. But if we could post that now, and then we can just kind of make sure everyone has an opportunity to, to pull that up in a separate window. Or just click the link, and it can go check it out and see all of the guests. There's going to be a, a lot of people there at the convention. But here we go. Thank you, Sarah. This is where you want to go right there. ChillerTheater.com. Uh, there's the link. You can literally just click it in the chat. It'll take you to a the site. Gives you the information, ticket prices, all, down, all, the, all the info you need. And you want to go. And I love that. 
tell him Craven sent you. That's hilarious, Sarah. Yeah, I love it, that. Yeah, if if you come to me and tell and tell me that Craven sent you, I'll think of a little something extra, a little something Ooh. special. Uh, you know, Ooh. because obviously, like, if, if, for the real fans. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's so cool for the community. Yes, that's right. That's awesome, Matthew. So, guys, there you go. A little extra, extra if you can make the trip. Matthew's going to give you a little extra something, something for being there as a Craven Eye representing the channel. And, and uh, that's really awesome, Matthew, for you to do that. Um, and it's going to be a blast. But that's not all. If you guys are interested, let's say you're watching this right now and you are a convention booker. You work at a convention. You organize these cons. If you are interested in booking um, Matthew for a convention appearance or a private autograph signing, he also can do those things uh, as well. Or I should say the private autograph signing in addition to convention appearances. You just simply need to contact right here, sixcommarketing.com. And they will reach back to you, let them know you're, what you're looking to do. And most likely you'll hear back from Robert, who I had on the channel a couple of weeks ago, I think it was. Uh, Robert came on and, uh, you, and you guys can work that out. So if you desire a private signing for Matthew to sign a bunch of items um, that can be arranged. All right. So that's a possibility. Or if you run a con again, I know I'm redundant, but I'm going to say it again. If you're running a convention, you're looking to book amazing talent who are going to bring a lot of people to your your set your go through the doors. Matthew is the guy. All right. So contact Sixcom Marketing right there, and you will be able to get all the information you need. <clears throat> excuse me to book him for either of those or both of those for that matter. So don't forget to do that. Just click that link, check it out. And by the way, if you click that link, you'll see not only Matthew but all of his teammates, all of the clients that are a part of Syscom Marketing, you can also book for private signing. So I'm telling you guys, check it out if you're in that position to want to do those kind of things. Um, and I want to say uh, real quick, good night to Polar. Our good friend Polar <clears throat> is heading out to go to bed. We're right behind you. So uh, you have a sleep, you sleep well, Polar. Thanks for being here. Um, and here's a one more question, last question of the night, and uh, and then we're gonna call it a stream, guys. <clears throat> two boys, my friend Eric over at Two Boys, and their scary pop says, Matthew, as a ghost face, would you have liked to have seen some scenes play out differently? Oh well, that's a good question. Um... You know, it's yeah, it's difficult to answer. You, you have you have to had uh, to have a lot of imagination, and that that's why the the writers are so good at what they do. Because when I watched the uh, Scream Six, I thought I thought it was perfect as it was. You know, like. Uh, yeah. I love the 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 aspect like uh, this kind of new genre, more crime, uh, drama, thriller, uh, yes. um, police investigation, uh, action mm -hmm. aspect of it, um, yep. uh, and keeping at the same time did this or did this you know like very horror style, and I thought. Every scene was great, and and every scene every scene was great, and could couldn't be any uh, other different. Um, okay. I appreciate them all, and and if something could have been done differently, well, it's up to the to the next installment to bring up new ideas you know mm -hmm. uh explore new territory and um yeah, yeah make us make us dream a little bit but as for this yeah. one i i think they the, the the creator of it uh worse worse spot on 
on on the scenes so nice yeah, yeah that that's what uh i, I would say mm -hmm. okay no absolutely it, it was you know a lot of great stuff a lot of great stuff and of course christopher landon as you know has been signed on now radio silence is moving on new director in town i i really like christopher got to interview him a month ago and it was a joy to have him here he i i am convinced he is the right guy to lead the franchise moving forward, personally. Um, and I I want to ask you this question. I want to say that was the last one. I promise this is really <laughs> <laughs> I just had to get this in real quick. Um, are you open? Because we don't know we don't know where they're filming seven yet, right? Initially, the you know, production weekly, you know, trade publication had listed in Montreal as the filming location again. Then they took that off. And it's it's like not, not nothing's listed now. So we don't know for sure. But either way, if the opportunity came about for you to reappear as Ghostface in Scream 7, would you want to return to the franchise? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, totally I, uh, that that'd be awesome because filming the this the the sixth movie was mm -hmm. so much fun was uh, you know an amazing experience and having a chance to do it again yeah that'd be a blast but like like you said uh at this point we don't know for sure wh where it's going to be uh shot mm -hmm. and unless it's in montreal uh chances are chances are very slim for me to to get on that train um it would it would have to come here and okay. I'd, I'd gladly uh put the costume once more yeah I, I, I will give it my all <laughs> but yeah 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 that that'd be a little um yeah that that'd be fun that'd be a little dream come true again but well Cross fingers. Uh, we'll see. Yes. Uh, we'll see uh, how it unravels. Very good. And everyone's just real quick. They're saying, going to saying good night. Uh, it's been a great night, Craven. Nice to meet a fellow Canadian in films and chat. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and uh, everyone's saying thanks for coming by. Absolutely. This has been a real honor, a real treat. Always a great interview when you come into Craven something scary. All well. Thank you, Eric. Uh, CSR Collectible says you're a great ghost face. Thank 100%. you very much. <laughs> very much. Uh, Val says, thank you, Matthew, for joining us tonight and sharing your experience with us Scream fans. Yay. Uh, and then Sarah says, thank you so much for joining us, Matthew. All right. Oh, and look here. There's our buddy, Robert, checking <laughs> in from Sixcom Marketing. Hey, Robert, what's up, my man? Hey, Robert, Great. how are you? <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Great questions and answers. Well, thanks, Robert. And uh, this was a real treat, a real joy, Matthew. You've been such a joy and a pleasure. And I, I appreciate your honesty and your humility. And, you know, you, you, it's, you're the kind of guy that we just want to root for. We just want to see more of you, man. You know, and you did an amazing job. I want you to know. Your opening kill of Samara is it's 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 an iconic it's iconic now it's part of the opening kills and and there's you know there's only six of those well actually there's only five of those because oh. Tara wasn't didn't die in the opening of five so you're really, right you're right you know, yeah so it's even smaller <laughs> it's even <laughs> smaller um, but that's right Robert we were just talking about that that's right <laughs> I'm all for it I. Uh, supported 100 percent uh and uh two boys says appreciate you matthew for feeding the passion of the franchise love your work in six yes 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 well thank you for you all community for tuning in tonight it was really um and it was really an honor and a pleasure to share to share my passion and my experience in the movie with you yes. and especially with you stevens thank you so yes. much for having me tonight on your show Ooh, oh, least. it's my pleasure, man. Seriously. And I and thank you for being so generous and going over the time that we had anticipated. That that means a lot. And I really appreciate you doing that. And 
And look at all the amazing information we got in this extra time. <laughs> such good stuff. But uh, we are going to be respectful of, of Matthew and we'll end it here. But listen, remember, guys, remember this weekend, get out to Parsippany, New Jersey at the Hilton Hotel, the Chiller Theater Expo Convention. This is Matthew's very first East Coast appearance. And you need to be there again, guys. If it's doable, I understand not everybody can go, right? We I get that. But if it's if it's within driving, reasonable driving distance, or if you can hop on a, you know, hop on a find you a nice little budget fare somewhere on sale, jump on that plane. It's gonna be worth it because you're gonna get to meet everybody. Lynn, Alan, uh, Matthew, Kevin Ball, the whole group. So don't forget. You want to be there and say you were a part of the Scream reunion in New Jersey. All right. So the websites are in the chat. Thank you guys so much. There's a link again to get all the information you need for Chiller. And click that. You'll get everything. Ticket prices, directions, the whole nine yards. Uh, thanks again, Matt. Says we need a Scream horror con. Yes, we do. Yes, we there do. There we go. That would be amazing. All right. So, Matthew, do me a favor. You hang tight. I'll meet you backstage. So just hang tight. Uh, and for everyone else in the chat, thank you for your super chats tonight supporting the channel. Thank you for your awesome questions and comments. And thank you for being here to uh, celebrate the amazing work of Matthew Coderre as Ghostface and Scream 6. It was amazing. And we'll see you all very, very soon. Good night, everyone. Hey, you have been watching Craving Something Scary. This is Lee Waddell, the original Ghostface, thanking you for stopping by and checking it out.